Hi everyone, Bob here. Yeah, I know, it's been a while. <laughs> I've been a little busy. I'm trying to get back into the swing of things. And I'm going to start doing just that by talking about a recent film. Uh, Aelita, Battle Angel. Uh, not too recent, unfortunately. This actually already came out a couple weeks by now. By the time you're watching this, I'm sure some of you have already seen it for yourself and form, uh, formed your own opinions. But it, it was pretty recent for me. I, I didn't get a chance to see it until uh, just a few days ago, because I've been uh, pretty busy, but I finally got a chance to see it, and it's been a long time coming for me, because a little bit of backstory, uh, I'm actually pretty well acquainted with this IP. Way back when I was a kid, I ran with a pretty nerdy clique. They're all into video games and anime, so naturally I kind of fell into it myself. Of course, also back then the internet was a much smaller place than it is today. It's not like kids these days where they can just go to whatever website and watch all the stuff they want uh, just just be able to stream it right to their computers or their phones or whatever that wasn't available to me back in the day so if I wanted to learn about anime I had to go down to my local blockbuster video which was a thing back then and uh, check out a copy of uh, something just anything that they had available on the shelves which wasn't much um, on VHS, which was also a thing back in the day. So, one day, way back when I was still in middle school, I went to Blockbuster Video, and I was going through their one, like, little shelf, just like a few rows of VHS tapes to see if I found anything that caught my interest, because I couldn't just read about it in advance. And, uh, eventually I settled on a copy of Battle Angel that they had on the shelves, just because it looked kind of interesting, had a lot of sci-fi elements, and, uh, I'm very big into sci-fi, so I took it home and I watched it, and it blew my little mind. Uh, up until that point, it had not occurred to me that you could use the medium of animation to tell a story like that. Of course, I knew you could use animation to tell more adult-oriented stories. I remember Beavis and Butthead was also really popular back at the time. But I'd never seen anyone use animation to tell a story like that, and it did sort of spark a little bit of a brief love affair with uh, anime that I had, along with my friends back in the day that lasted a few years. And of course, a few years uh, later, down the line after having finally watched this for the first time, director James Cameron uh, announces that he plans on wanting to do a Battle Angel movie, which of course got me really psyched. I was really pumped. I wanted to uh, go ahead and see it, and it never materialized. He of course went on to do other things, like the Avatar movie, but uh, it this Battle Angel project just never, ever seemed to happen. And eventually, after a few years, I kind of reserved myself to the belief that this film just wasn't going to happen. It was never going to materialize. And, of course, as the years went on, my interest in anime began to wane, and I just kind of stopped uh, following it altogether. And then, of course, now, flash forward, to, or rather, fast forward to now, it's 2019, and only just now has he finally got, along, got around to releasing that Battle Angel film that he was talking about. Only this time, it's uh, he's not at the helm. He's just producing and writing. It's Robert Rodriguez who's directing this time. I guess uh, eventually, finally, someone went up to James Cameron and said, Hey, man, you've been sitting on these uh, these movie rights for so long. You know, When are you going to do something with them? <laughs> I guess he finally decided to, you know, deliver on what he said he was going to do. And he did deliver. And now, after so many years, um, after... Finally being acquainted, or rather being acquainted with this uh, IP since I was a kid, and I'm a grown adult, and i finally seen this live-action movie that he's been talking about for well over a decade now, I can safely say that, um, yeah, it's a good movie. I mean, it's not great. You know, I don't think it's like one of the best things that uh, either Cameron or Rodriguez has, has ever done. Um, but it was good. It was a sufficiently satisfying film and uh, I was glad uh, to uh, finally um, finally caught it. I guess I'll go ahead and start from the beginning for anyone um, who's uh, haven't seen this film yet and wants to learn a little bit more. I don't know how many of you are still out there <laughs> but yeah it's a it's a fun story even though as you're about to find out it is heavily derivative of other works of science fiction namely Mad Max and Blade Runner. Um, however, if you're the kind of person you're into Mad Max and Blade Runner, then this might be right up your alley. But uh, basically, it's set centuries into the future, 
where, uh, and the details are a little vague, but it unfolds as the film goes along, that uh, there, there was some great war that occurred that reduced um, mankind, or at least um, people living on Earth, into a life of global destitution. You know, the world is a wasteland and everyone's gathered in these huge mega cities, and the, and the film story takes place in two cities. A one called Scrap Iron City, which is this very sort of um, dystopian landscape where everyone kind of is just struggling to survive on what little remains from uh, the old civilization. And then, of course, there's a second city uh, city called Z- um, Zalem, or Typhirus, as it was originally called in the manga, but uh, I'm not going to get too nerdy with it here <laughs> with the names, because then it's going to get really confusing. But yes, and there's a second city called Zalem, which is described as the last of the floating cities. It's this huge um, science fiction spectacle of a city that literally floats over Scrap Iron City. And it's supposed to be legendary for being this beautiful utopia where nobody wants for anything. And everyone wants to get up there, but nobody knows how, you know. And once somebody who lives in Zalem leaves, they can't ever go back which is a point that's also made in the story. And the story follows um, a character, uh, of course the main character, Ilea, played here by uh, Rosa Salazar, who's pretty well cast in this film, I actually liked her in this role, who is a cyborg discovered in the ruins underneath uh, Zalem, where people go to uh, get their scraps and uh, all the other stuff that's uh, disposed of from the city above, because everyone just kind of lives off of <laughs> off of Zalem's trash bin in Scrap Iron City. And she's discovered there by one Dr. Dyson um, Ito, played by Christoph Waltz, who's also wonderfully cast in this film. I really liked him in this role. I think they really nailed the casting with him who just happens to be an expert on cyborgs. Well, he brings her back to life, and unfortunately she has no memory of who she is, how she got there, or anything regarding her identity. She gets this big old blank slate. And a lot of the film, without getting too deep into the spoilers or anything, it's basically a story of her discovering her origin story. Where did she come from? How did she get to where she... um? where she was, where she was discovered by Dr. Ito. And, of course, it's a little bit of romance. There's some action in there as she discovers that she's got this uh, amazing talent for hand-to-hand combat that's deeply embedded in her subconscious or whatever. And it's a little bit of a story of just kind of self-discovery, and there's a bit of tragedy and romance. There's just a lot of little elements that go into it. And uh, even though the story does get a little hijacked near the end with all the action sequences, um, I will say as an action film, it was satisfying. Um, I felt like the action was very well shot. It was very well directed. I never felt like too confused as to where everyone was in relation to each other. I never felt confused about anyone's motives. Of course, because uh, this is partially because I'm already acquainted with the, with the source material. But um, I'm, I imagine anyone else who had never seen the anime or read the manga or anything, they would be able to follow it pretty well. Um, it lays out everyone's motivations and uh, their goals pretty clearly in the film. So you very rarely would, I imagine, anyone would be confused trying to follow the story, even though there are a, a lot of little elements, that a lot of moving parts that go along with it. Let's see, who else we got? Uh, Kian Johnson played uh, Hugo, who turns out to be um, Aelita's love interest in the film. This was uh, something I was really interested in because when I one of the things that really grabbed me about the original story when I was a kid was how it was also kind of a, a romance story. A bit of a... Um, well, I won't go into too many details. I don't want to spoil it, but it was something that really impressed me when I was a kid. Um, how the story played out, partially because, you know, I'm, I'm, I was just like a teenage boy and I'm into action and robots and stuff. So like seeing something like, you know, all that stuff kind of made a romance story a little easier for me to swallow, made it a little, uh, more palatable, but I did like how it uh, played out. And I was curious to see, um, if it would be just as, um, impactful as a live action film. And maybe it's because I'm a little older. 
But uh, the romance between Aelita and Hugo just didn't quite um, didn't quite grab me as it did. Maybe it's because I'm an adult and I look at it and it just seems more like puppy love than actual genuine romance. But it was interesting to follow, uh, follow their characters, see how they develop and how they change as they learn more about themselves and one another as it goes along. And I think um, Johnson was a pretty good actor. It's just uh, the way the whole story um, with their romance plays out. It just didn't quite thrill me as well as before. Again, it's also because I kind of... I, I'm already familiar with the source material, so I went into it already knowing where everything was going. So there wasn't really a lot in the way of surprises. There was one thing that did kind of bother me. I can't remember if it was in the manga as well, but I remember it was in the anime. Hugo had this sort of um, um, story, a little bit of a background. He had an older brother who really, really wanted to get to Salem, and he came up with this crazy plan to like build his own like zeppelin and just float up there and sneak in but the authorities found out before he could put his plan into action and he got killed and that kind of served as a um driving motivating factor for hugo to also pursue his desire to get into Salem. so i i thought that was really interesting but that that's not in the movie they completely did away with that altogether which was unfortunate because i thought it gave his character a little bit more complexity because the audience is wondering, like, does he really want to get into Salem because he thinks life is better up is up there, or is he just trying to keep his dead brother's dream alive? You know, which is it? But no, that was removed altogether, so that was a little unfortunate. Um, who else? Uh, Jennifer Connelly as uh, Dr. Sheeran, who wasn't in the manga. She was a, a character created for the uh, very short-lived anime, So, but they brought her in. And uh, she's all right. She um, she only seems like she appears every once in a while to kind of help keep the plot going. Uh, but there was one thing that was interesting uh, that they added for the film. I don't think this was in the manga. Well, it definitely wasn't in the manga, but I don't think it was in the anime either. Um, I'll go ahead and mention it here. It feels a little spoilerish, but that they mentioned how apparently her and um, Doctor Ito had a had a child at one point. And uh, I won't go into the details as to how that worked out, but uh, eventually it kind of plays into Dr. Ito's character about his reservations about um, having Aelita um, become a hunter warrior or a bounty hunter as it is, or like this uh, motorball, <clears throat> excuse me, a uh, motorball contestant because it's such a violent and dangerous lifestyle and he has these moral reservations about making, um, turning people into killing machines. I actually like that. I thought that gave his character uh, a little more complexity as well and gave him some more interesting motivations for having reservations about giving Aelita her berserker cyborg body thing to allow her to do all that stuff because he has a moral problem with it and not just because he wants to turn her into some sort of Mary Sue which is also an interesting thing about the story and how it's also kind of a story about a girl who's trying to be turned into a Mary Sue <laughs> when she really doesn't want to be she wants to get out there and discover herself and you know she wants to get her hands dirty and you know fight and you know play aggressive sports and things like that she doesn't want to be this perfect little doll and i think that's all um interesting and that kind of plays into the story as well i uh i like that as well um visually the the film's great um i will mention i did go to see this in 3d uh, I don't think 3D is really necessary to uh, enjoy this film. Like, some films are just really, really good in 3D. I don't think that's the case here. The 3D wasn't bad. It was competent. It was good. It wasn't ever harsh on the eyes or anything. But, I mean, with the exception of a couple action scenes, it didn't really amuse me that much. I, I think going back, if I knew what I did going in, I probably would have just settled for an ordinary non-3D screening. Not much else left to talk about here. This video is getting a little long. Um, a couple more criticisms. Uh, there was a few attempts at humor that fell flat. It's not trying to be a comedy or anything, and it never got, like, cringy bad. But there were a handful of moments in the movie where they were trying to uh, elicit laughter from the audience, and uh, I can't recall ever getting a, a true, honest laugh at any point. I guess there were a couple chuckles from the audience, but... 
Uh, no. As a comedy, it just, uh, well, it wasn't really intended to be a comedy, but its attempts at comedy certainly uh, didn't really hash out. Um, another thing, the movie, I, I won't say it ends on a cliffhanger. It actually does a pretty good job tying up most of its loose ends, but it does sort of leave on a note suggesting that uh, they're anticipating a sequel, which kind of left me going, ugh. Yeah, I wasn't all too impressed by that, especially considering that the film isn't quite doing um, the best at the box office domestically. It's kind of underperforming. It's doing pretty well overseas, though. Uh, <laughs> but, um, yeah, at the rate things are going, um, I'm guessing that's just not going to happen. What did surprise me about the ending, though, was the big reveal of uh, Edward Norton. As uh, Nova, I did not anticipate that. I kind of want to see a sequel just so I can see Edward Norton as uh, Nova. That would be really cool. And I would like to see a sequel in general to this, but at the rate things are going, it doesn't seem like it's going to happen. It seems like there's just not a lot of audience enthusiasm here stateside for uh, for this project. It seems like there's still a little bit of a... Even though like superhero movies and comic book movies are still really much popular at the moment, it seems like anything based off of an anime or a manga kind of uh it seems like audiences are a bit cynical towards them they're not quite as hyped up about it in fact even the usher at the movie theater i went to to go see this uh referred to it as a uh, anime schoolgirl terminator as he was uh taking my ticket um to be fair he's uh he's at least half right <laughs> but uh that's kind of He's kind of struck a pretty emphatic note there with what I'm guessing is how a lot of people feel about this film. Though, it seems like most of the people who are taking a chance to go see this film uh, do seem to like it. It is a, uh, it, like I say, it's a satisfying, um, sufficiently entertaining action film. I would say, um, compared to um, Cameron's other works, I would say this is at the very least as good as Avatar, if not slightly better. I wouldn't say it's quite as good as, say, um, Aliens or Terminator 2, though those are some really high bars to hurdle. Uh, still, I would say that uh, it's at least as good as Avatar, so if you liked Avatar, I would say that you're going to love this just as much. Uh, like I say, it's probably a little better. And while the odds of us getting that sequel, that second uh, volume to the Battle Angel Angel story, the odds are pretty dismal for that. Uh, I still, I'm happy with what I got. If this is all the Battle Angel we get, then I'm cool with it. It's just a shame it took this long to get out, because even though while I'm feeling, like, pretty good about it, I know that, like, teenager me, like, high school me would have just absolutely loved this. He would have been all over it. It would have been his, his favorite movie ever. <laughs> but, um, as an adult, as a grown man, um, yeah, it's good. Uh, I would recommend it, at least for a matinee showing. If if you're going to wait and see if you can rent it, see if you can get it on Netflix or something, then, you know, you can go do that. Uh, but I, I would say if you're going to the theaters this weekend and you're looking for something action-packed and you're curious about Battle Angel Alita, I would say go see it. I'd say it's a, it's a good film and uh, it's uh, not quite getting all the love I think it deserves. And yeah, that just about d uh, does it for this uh, very quick off-the-cuff video or review rather of this film. I'll get that. I'll get back to the habit of doing Criterion critiques very soon. But I just want to go ahead and share my opinions on a Battle Angel Alita. Kind of help me get back into the groove of making videos again. Uh, if you have any uh, questions or comments for me or suggestions you on things you want to see on the channel. Feel free to leave uh, a comment down in the comment section. Or if you just have feelings about this film and you want to just uh, share uh, your thoughts, maybe you think a little differently than I do, um, then go ahead and share those too. I'd love to hear some feedback on uh, what you all think of this film. Uh, until then, you all be good to each other, and I will see you in the next video.